These rooms, Henry VIII's state apartments at Hampton Court, were built to impress. Visitors ascending the processional stair up from the inner court, or clock court as it's now known, would have come into this great hall, the first apartment on the royal processional route. And the idea was that they would be overwhelmed. Henry started building this hall in 1532. It was to be a showpiece palace for himself and Anne Boleyn. If you look up, you will see the magnificent hammer beam roof. The glass sadly doesn't exist anymore from Henry's time. This is all 19th century. It was knocked out in the 17th century. The wonderful tapestries that grace the walls of the Abraham tapestries, they are Fab they were fabulously expensive in their own day, and after the crown jewels, they are the second most valuable artifact in this country. Henry owned 800 tapestries, and 28 remain today at Hampton Court. At the end of Queen Elizabeth's reign, at the end of the 16th century, George Wyatt, Anne Boleyn's memorialist, wrote that her, the Hampton Court was made beautiful by the beautiful needlework she herself had put into tapestries here, but we don't know whether any of them survive, and it's very unlikely. So this is the first room in which visitors would come. They would be overwhelmed by it, but it's a myth that Henry VIII ever ate here. There's not one single record of him doing so. And basically, the Lord Steward would have presided over the household. It's like an upstairs, downstairs situation. The Lord Chamberlain presided over the House of Magnificence, the court itself. The Lord Steward over the downstairs household, the service household. But this is the room where Henry would have held court with each of his last five queens. This is the second room along the processional route and it's called the Great Watching Chamber. And what you need to remember is that these are ribbon lodgings, these royal lodgings. They're a style imported from the great palaces of France, which Henry avidly copied. And so the, the closer, the further you got along this processional route, the closer you got to the king. Now this is a very important room, the great watching chamber, because it is where the yeomen of the guard would line the walls and keep watch and guard the king. And later on, a body of guards that Henry himself formed, the gentlemen pensioners, they also would line the, line the walls. They're very impressive, they had to be very tall and they wore splendid ceremonial uniforms. Uh, so this is the first room before you come to what we would call the throne room or presence chamber. It was behind that door behind me. And when you went through there, you would come into the king's presence. Now, you had to be quite important to get that far. You might get this far. If you were a petitioner, you might want to crowd this room, as people often did, and the processional route that goes on from the door at the far end of the room that way. But those who are privileged would get into the presence chamber and be received by the king. Beyond the presence chamber was the privy chamber. Now, people do get confused about this. It's not just the part of the palace where the king had his own private apartments. It's actually a department of state, and it's peopled by gentlemen of the privy chamber who have, were close to the king, have his ear, and are very, very influential. So it is a department of state. If you're a gentleman of the privy chamber, that's privy chamber with capital letters. So beyond the presence chamber was the Holy of Holies, the privy chamber, and that's where the king lived privately, or not so privately as the case may be. It's not just one room, it's a warren of rooms, because Henry VIII loved his privacy, and he liked coziness, he liked small chambers, warm chambers. He had a state bedchamber at the further end of the privy chamber. He was put to bed ceremonially there every night, but he'd then go beyond it to his smaller bedchamber where he actually slept. And here at Hampton Court, he had a third bedchamber which was attached to the Queen's apartments. The Queen had her own set of apartments here. And usually they were connected to the King's at the bedchamber end by a gallery or a stair or a connecting door. So if you went through that door there into the present chamber, you were a very important personage. But if you went through the door beyond it, into the privy chamber itself, you were very privileged indeed. <laughs>